Hey, good morning, everybody. Good Monday, day after Mother's Day. I couldn't resist today uh, shooting my devotional or starting this introduction outside. I just wanted to remind everyone what the Mother's Day weekend weather looked like. Uh, just in case you've forgotten in the past two days. Yep, we're talking a blanket of snow. But I hope you're doing well. Uh, if you're starting the day, I hope you have a great day. If you're ending the day, I hope you've had a good day. Uh, you know, uh, we're going to be doing devotions just for a few more, another week or so. Uh, our hoping is that uh, when the governor lifts the stay home, stay safe, that would be about the right time for us to stop doing our devotions, uh, our morning devotions. Plus, the other side of it is we're waiting for the last plague to come. Uh, you know, we've had the virus. We've got the murder hornets. We've got uh, snow in May. So, you know, one more plague or two, and we should be done with this thing. A couple of weeks ago, I had uh, Bill Smith, one of our elders, uh, do a devotional on prayer. And I'd also like to have, do, do something a little different. Uh, one of our staff members I'd like to have share something today uh, for our devotional. Sarah McNulty serves on our staff. She does our, multi, our, our media, I should say, our, our uh, social media, all of our communications, our graphic arts. You probably know her a little bit better as well from the fact that she's on worship team. And I've asked Sarah to uh, give us some thoughts. And so I'll turn it over to her and I hope that you have a great day today. Hey there, my name is Sarah McNulty. I am the Director of Graphics and Communications and I want to talk to you today about social media. Um, it's been on my mind particularly lately. Um, I think in general we're on social media a lot, but with this COVID-19 pandemic, we are really driven to social media. We're driven for information, for updates, um, looking, you know, what updates from our government, updates on what's open, what's not open. Um, we're, we go there for entertainment, you know. I love a good meme. So I go to social media looking for a little bit of entertainment. Uh, we go looking for connection to connect with people. We go for uh, community to feel that sense of community that we all um, are probably longing for a little bit more um, now that we're, we're home. Um, so we are really probably on it a lot more now um, than maybe times past. So I think it's worth talking about a little bit. And my prayer for us today is that this would be a time for you um, to maybe to just think about it. That's really my hope here is that there would just be like a little, um, if anything, just some thought around it. Um, offer a little bit of new perspective, maybe um, a few little helpful tips um, that are maybe practical for you, um, but really just to get you thinking about it. So here we go. We have choices when it comes to social media. I've narrowed it down to three choices, and I'm going to spend most of the time talking about the third choice, but we have the choice to isolate. We have the choice to insulate or we have the choice to infiltrate. So the choice to isolate, that would look like total social media avoidance, not being on it at all. The choice to insulate, that would look like um, maybe putting some parameters on uh, whether it's like the amount of, of followers or friends um, or who you sort of let in. Um, as far as that goes, it could be avoiding certain platforms altogether. Um, that would be like the choice to insulate. The choice to infiltrate. Now, this choice can go one of two ways. Uh, we can insulate it or infiltrate social media in a positive way or a negative way. Um, so let's start talking about that and think about it a little bit. Um, so how do you know which side you fall on? Uh, if this positive way or negative way. Are you building people up or are you tearing people down? Are you energizing to people or are you draining to people? Are you speaking words of life into people or are you speaking words that hurt? Those are all questions to kind of get you thinking a little bit. Um, 
about how you use social media or maybe how you see other people social use social media. Um, so some of the ways we can sort of weed out um, and think about which side you might fall on or which way you're using it is, um, and I'm going to talk about a few different things here, so stick with me, is cryptic posts. Um, if you're using it um, in a social media in kind of a negative way, uh, your posts might be cryptic. Uh, those are the ones um, that you've seen where there, there's, there might be a little bit of phishing um, for, for, for likes or for comments without offering um, a lot of explanation or information, those cryptic posts oversharing posts, um, you know, oversharing those things that kind of make you go like that emoji face a little bit, um, that kind of like a little bit of cringe worthy things that, um, you know, you just can't help but wonder when I see those, like, are, is this something that, um, that is helpful being out there? Um, a lot of times, like when it's that kind of oversharing, the answer is no, it's not helpful. Um, so I would say if you're not addressing things in your, I'll say real life, um, but you're only putting it out in a social, in your social media life, um, that that is unhealthy. So to be able to address those things in your real life, and um, and not just use it, not just address it solely on social media. I think there is a way to um, to to share things and be real and authentic um, without oversharing. Uh, thinking about your audience, um, your sphere of reach, of influence, your sphere of uh, connection and relationships. You know, the great thing about social media is that we can connect with people so much broader than where our physical location is. Like, you know, I'm physically here in Jericho, Vermont, um, but because and through social media, I have the opportunity to connect with people throughout the world, which is really pretty incredible if you think about it, that we're not limited to just where we are physically. Um, but uh, along with that is, people from all different walks of life, all different backgrounds um, and experiences and, and thoughts and, um, and hurts. There are all kinds of things um, with people. And so being able to really kind of think about, you know, what am I putting out on social media and who is going to see it? Who's going to read it? And what kind of effect is that going to have? So thinking about like, you know, if what you're sharing or posting is offensive, if it's super polarizing um, to a group of people, um, to be able to kind of think twice about that before hitting that send or share or publish or, you know, whatever the word is, depending on the platform, um, to be thinking about that, to be thinking about who's going to see this if I share it, if I post it. Um, and how is that going to affect them and their spiritual life? You know, not knowing um, where people might be at, um, to be able to think about that. One of the things I I pray for in my personal, you know, prayer life is that I would not be a hindrance to somebody knowing Christ or for somebody to receive Jesus' love, that um, that I would not be a hindrance. So asking yourself, are you a hindrance is what you're sharing, what you're posting, how you're using social media. Is it a hindrance or are you a conduit? Are you um, a catalyst for somebody to, to know and experience Christ's love for them? Um, those two sides of, of the spectrum there and being able to think about that a little bit. Another thing with social media is it um, does tend to be kind of ripe ground for um, 
I'll say hostile engagements um, where somebody maybe posts something or comments on something and then we sort of feel this need to like respond right away or in a certain way. Um, so before maybe responding in that way, taking a step back and thinking like, are these words of life? Are these life-giving words? Are they encouraging? Are they energizing? Or is this going to hurt somebody? Is this going to engage in a way that isn't helpful, um, that isn't going to advance God's kingdom? I really feel like, you know, if we claim to know uh, Jesus as our savior, if we acknowledge him in that way in our lives, that we should be thinking about those things, about um about our our words and how we're engaging in that way and that our words would be be those life-giving energizing words um that idea of of being transparent and authentic and and real in in how we communicate on social media uh, because the bottom line is that your heart spirit is reflected in your social media. Um, just like anything else, right? And how you live your life, the words you say, the, the actions um, that you have, the things you do, your heart spirit, the condition of your heart is reflected in those things and it's reflected in your social media. Um, so being able to sort of take an inventory of your heart and thinking like, uh, you know, maybe my heart is hurting. Maybe my heart needs a little attention right now. And so to be able to sort of step back from how you're engaging in social media and spending some time um, in God's word and in prayer and in, in your own personal relationship with Jesus um, before really engaging in social media in that way. Um, the other side of social media too is that it can have the potential to, I think, weigh us down and be draining. I know it can be for me if I'm, if I go on there without boundaries, without a lot of thought. So one of the things, um, that I like to do, uh, is, you know, I often will access social media on my phone. So one of the things I like to do is before accessing, uh, going to one of my social media apps, I go to my Bible app first and I go there and I, I read a devotional. Um, I read a couple Bible verses or something. And, and then I go, I go to my Bible app before I go to my social media app and putting some, again, some boundaries on, on the amount of time that you're there, um, because I think we do need to to protect ourselves and guard our hearts a little bit because it can be draining for us. Um, so being able to to utilize some some strategies uh, to to protect yourself when you're engaging there. Um, before we sign off here, I have a couple Bible verses that I thought tied in really nicely to some of these things. Um, that we've been talking about today. Um, so I want to leave you with those. The first one is Romans 12, nine through 10. Love from the center of who you are. Don't fake it. Run for dear life from evil. Hold on for dear life to good. Be good friends who love deeply. Practice playing second fiddle. And then Ephesians 4, 29. Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. Romans 12, one through two. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you take your everyday ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work and walking around life and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity. God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. 
And the last one is Colossians 3, verses 12 through 14. So chosen by God for this new life of love, dress in the wardrobe God picked out for you. Compassion, kindness, humility, quiet strength, discipline, be even-tempered, content with second place, quick to forgive an offense, forgive as quickly and completely as the master forgave you, and regardless of what else you put on, wear love. It's your basic all-purpose garment. Never be without it. Um, let me close with a word of prayer. Father, uh, we just come before you today and we offer up our social media. We offer up our lives as um, a living sacrifice to you, as a worship to you, God. Lord, we just ask today that everything we do, everything we say would bring glory and honor to you, that we would be mindful in um in the words we speak, in the way we use um, social media, Lord. We ask that you would give us wisdom and discernment around it, that we would be able to see it as an opportunity to advance your kingdom, Lord, um, and that you would be magnified through it, through how we use it. Lord, thank you for the people you've placed in our lives. And I ask Jesus that, um, that our actions, my actions, would not be a hindrance to somebody knowing you and knowing your love for them, Lord, but use me as a catalyst. Use us as conduits, God. I pray these things in your precious and powerful name, Lord Jesus. Amen. So I hope today that you wear love and that you would feel blessed. Take care.